Here's a kind of hacky auto layout trick to create sliders that are really easily adjustable by just scrubbing this value in here. Um, I could create like a range selector or just like a volume selector using this structure. I also set it up so that I have a nested component variant in here so I could turn on and off the tooltip. Um, so pretty helpful trick, pretty easy to do once you understand the structure. This could also be applied to maybe like a loading indicator. Um, so it just makes your components a lot more scalable and they can be adjusted really simply. I could type in different values here if I wanted to. Um, so how this works, I will start off with just sort of the structure. Let's talk about how this is laid out. So I have these being my master components up here. And the reason I'm doing that is just so that I can make one adjustment. Oops, I can make one adjustment up here and it will push to all my variants below. Um, you don't have to do it this way, but it is a best practice. So I'll be doing it like that. So to start off, all I need is an ellipse and then I'll just change the color to orange and I'm gonna turn this into my button. Um, so now that that's a component, that's gonna be my base component for the slider button. And then I just need one as well for the tooltip. So I'll just type out some numbers real quick and press Shift A to turn them into an auto layout. And then I'm just gonna mess with some of these values to make it look kind of like a nice fancy tooltip. I want my text to be white and then I'll just add like this dark blue background. So now I need to add like the indicator below it. So I'll just draw out a little square. And then if I press enter, I can drill into here. I'll just delete the top part and then connect these two together. And then if I press escape, I can also click into here and round off this corner a little bit. Um, so where did it go? <laughs> so and now I just need to add a color to it. And if I press Command E, I can flatten it because you'll see as I put these together using auto layout, um, even if I set this to zero, it still thinks it's an entire square. So Command E will flatten it and then bring it all together. Um, so I can rename this to just my tooltip. And now these two components will create the base of my variants that I'll create next. So I can turn this into something. And now if I pull out some instances, I can now create different instances that are nested within these variants. So I'll center these to the bottom, put four pixels between them. And now I can turn this into my different variants. So I'll just call this button selector, something like that. Um, and now I just need a property to say that it is either active or non-active. So for this one, I'll just delete that. And then for this one, um, this one is active yes, and this one's active no, because it is not active. And then for this one, if I was to put this inside of the slider, it's just like this giant rectangle, whereas this is smaller. Um, so to fix that, I'll just constrain it to the size of this circle. So I need it to be 32 by 32, the same size as the circle here. Um, so now this container and this circle are my variants for my selector. So now, if I pull down an instance of this, I can start structuring the actual slider. So this is where a bit of the hacky auto layout magic happens. Um, so to start off, I'll just draw out a circle or any object really, it doesn't really matter, um, and duplicate it by holding Alt. And then if I put these together by pressing Shift A, auto layout, and then I'll center them, I can now start designing the first part of my slider. So I want this to have sort of like this. Well, actually, let's do orange first. So I want this to have the orange color. And all I have to do now is turn off the value here. So now this is where the scrubbing can happen. So as I make that adjustment, um, since these objects are using the spacing value, 
as I make the adjustment, they will adjust. So now I can just hold Alt, drag out the other side, which is going to be my dark or light gray color. Um, and we'll add that in in a second. And then I can drag out the other side. So now this is going to create my first selector, which just has um, value ranges that I can select. So if I turn these into an auto layout, make sure I select the whole thing, I can press Shift A, and now I want this to be centered. Now I can just press Command X and Command V and copy this into here. So now I can do that, press Command D to duplicate it, and now using the bracket keys I can move it over here. Um, so I'll just add a fill real quick so we can see what's going on. Um, Basically what's happening is I have these different auto layouts. So if I wanted to, I could make adjustments here or here. And most importantly here to change the range of my selections. And also this is nested with the different variants so I could turn it on and off. So now that that's working, I'm just gonna select these and make them a little bit smaller. Um, and I'm using command up arrow to do that. So now I have my slider component. So now if I was to have um, something like this, let me just detach this real quick. Um, I could just drop in my slider wherever I need it. Turn this off. And now I can set this to fill container. I can set these to be fill container as well. And then if I select this middle object, I can drag out these values as far as I want. And I could also turn these on as needed um, to represent whatever value. So in this case, it would be like um, 130K. So pretty simple structure there. And I can also use the same component to do my volume selector. So if I pull this out, um, I'll just detach it again so I can drop things inside of it. But if I was to duplicate this into here, just delete the old one, I could then just select these two and delete them. And what that does is just hides them. Um, I also have another one in here I need to delete. So now I could set this to like, let's say 65. And then if I select this, I can drag it out as much as I need to. Um, so pretty simple structure and it can be used for these two different types of selectors and I'm sure you can imagine how this would work for a loading state. I would just delete, oops, I would just delete the button selector and then I could drag out this value to be um, a loading state. So pretty simple structure to create this slider and then I can put it in lots of different scenarios. Um, a quick tip for the salary range or any range for that matter, if I wanted to, I could change this to be hug contents. And then when I make the adjustment, it will happen from the left side only and vice versa. If I was to do that to this side and set this side to be fill container, it would adjust from that side. So I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already.